Who would have thought the world would be so eager for my birth? I remember you, Boor, the god of wisdom, and standing beside you, the traveler. Is he all knowing and powerful now, like Greater Lord Ruka Devada? No, I can't feel the same kind of divinity I felt from the Greater Lord. It seems that the sages didn't get the chance to infuse the divine knowledge capsules into him. But even still, he has undoubtedly become a true god now. <sighs> so we're too late? The Balladeer has already... already become a god? The Balladeer. A long bygone title. When my spirit ascended to divinity, I felt as if I had existed for the same number of epochs as heaven and earth. Looking back, the existence of what once called itself Kuni Kazushi appears infinitely small and ugly. This imposing aura, it really feels like a god! A body that capitalizes on the Balladeer's original construction as a mechanical puppet, with the Gnosis serving as a constant power supply. How much effort and resources did the Sages put into this? From a purely technological perspective, it's a commendable achievement indeed. It's no exaggeration to say, this is the culmination of human wisdom. You sure are something! Dishing out compliments at a time like this? But I don't think he's reached the spiritual height of a god. Strife is engraved upon every god and every gnosis brought forth into this world. Can you feel it? The exhilaration of such power and the thrill of anticipation for our contention. Nahida wouldn't feel the same things as you! Do you not realize that you are interrupting a conversation between gods? Lowly creature, know your place! The strife engraved upon a Gnosis. You're talking about the Archon War. Tavat's current peace was not easily won. I didn't personally participate in the Archon War, but the way I see it, all those losses were meaningless, driven by the demands of the laws. There's no point in bringing it up again. <laughs> Is that so? Yet I am deeply disappointed that I was never allowed the fortuity to personally participate in the Archon War. This is a first. Encountering a god in this world who does not crave power. No wonder your own people have abandoned you, god of wisdom. <laughs> your judgment is as your existence. Unsubstantial. This is where everything ends, Boor. The God of Wisdom. You should know that Wisdom cannot solve every problem. Like now, where your only option is to face me in combat. Come. Let us reenact a scene of the Archon War. Come and inaugurate my birth as a god. Perish! Brace yourself. <laughs> Insignificant past! My command, you shall fall. <laughs> Insignificant past. 
Wouldn't gliding be faster? Barbados, guide us. All hail. Born of ice and frost. Here we go. My endless cycle begins. Gliding be faster. Churn! <laughs> Think you can get away? Yahoo! Feeble human! You cannot defy me, mortal! Tremble! Burn to oblivion! and frost.
This is supposed to be a battle between gods, yet you choose to hide behind a mortal. And now, you're acting like you'd sacrifice yourself for a human. Are you having fun proving a false sense of heroism to yourself, Boor? The data collection is almost complete. Do you even know how many times you've tried to take my gnosis from me? <clears throat> We just concluded the 168th loop. Did you know that in the effort to create you, the people of Sumeru were forced to live through the exact same number of Subzerus festivals and Samsara cycles? The power of dreams. When did you use it on me? can't even defeat me in a dream. What do you hope to achieve with this little trick? <laughs> Come, Traveler. Just like before. Allow me to awaken the memories in your dreams. <gasps> All that battle experience! It's more than that. Compile everyone's wisdom in the name of the Archon. That is the original function of the Akasha. I've sent everything that happened just now to the people of Sumeru in the form of knowledge. I've asked them... ...to help you find a way to defeat the false god. Save you. Are you done with your tricks? Can I finally take this as a real battle between gods? I'll leave this to you. The first sage. A boor. A thousand eons! Mine to dominate! Take off. You're toast! Kneel! This is long overdue. Wind, hear me. Let's play. 
Here we go. Think you can get away? Brace yourselves. Eat this! Nice and spike! Blaze over! No touching! Barbados, guide us! The Temple of Wisdom! Committed to memory! <laughs> Let's play! Out of the frying pan! Born of ice and frost! Grow, grow, grow! Time for takeoff. Humans. Filthy humans. We haven't yet found the answer to the most important mystery. Erminsoul is still waiting to be saved. With the power of another Gnosis, we may now finally understand the last memory of Greater Lord Rukadevata. This is... That's right. This is the last memory of my predecessor. Huh. This sure seems very different from what Paimon imagined. Shouldn't Ermin Soul be in this realm of consciousness? Yes, that is our destination. But I didn't expect the remaining consciousness of Greater Lord Rukadevata to be as polluted as this. Forbidden knowledge? It seems you know about a concept that even I don't completely understand. Could you tell me what you know? Hmm, your inference seems logical enough. Forbidden knowledge once polluted the desert thousands of years ago, but was successfully repelled thanks to King Deshret's self-sacrifice and Greater Lord Rukadevata nearly exhausting her power. Then, a second instance of forbidden knowledge pollution occurred during the Conria Cataclysm 500 years ago. But I'm afraid it is much more serious this time, with Erminsoul itself already in danger. So... If we're in the remaining consciousness of Greater Lord Rukadevata, and it's also been affected by forbidden knowledge pollution, then does that mean in order to save us, Greater Lord Rukadevata? Yes. 
It's very possible that she sacrificed her life in the fight against forbidden knowledge. She didn't completely eradicate forbidden knowledge, but if it weren't for her actions, the pollution would have been far more rampant over these past 500 years. The way that everyone, including me, has forgotten everything about forbidden knowledge may very well be due to her restoration of Ermin Soul. <laughs> Aww. Do you feel sad, Nahida? I'm just uh, sharing her pain. The pollution of her consciousness here is severe. There is madness, chaos, and pain all around us. Did she fight to resist the forbidden knowledge pollution in such terrible conditions all the way up to her last breath? She even used her last remnant of lucid consciousness to leave a clue for us to follow. Yes, her words were distorted by forbidden knowledge, so that's all we could hear. But now, we have a chance to find the answer to this mystery. We can cross the polluted consciousness until we found the right path to meet with her lucid consciousness. And then, we'll let Greater Lord Ruka Devata tell us the truth in person. Each of us need to be mindful of the state of our own consciousness while we are here. Even with the Gnosis' protection, we must always keep a clear mind. Otherwise, we could go mad at any moment. <sighs> That's so scary! Don't worry, it should be easy enough for you to keep that mind of yours clear, Paimon. Let's go.